Hey everyone, so one of my friends called me last week, he is actually switching careers and asked me this question, Bara tell me, what is the fastest way to learn Python and can you guide me with a roadmap? So I start drafting and sketching a roadmap for him and I thought, why not sharing it with you? I learned Python about 10 years ago while I was working as a data engineer and an analyst, but the thing is, it took me almost two years to feel confident with Python. But today, things are totally different. We have amazing resources, we have AI tools, communities, and experts that are sharing their knowledge that could help you reach an intermediate level in just a few months. So now I'm going to show you step by step how to learn Python fast. So let's dive in. Okay, now I know at the start you all have the same question. Why we still have to learn Python and coding when we have AI? AI can do it even better than us, right? Well, of course, yes, AI can write code, but it also makes mistakes, sometimes dangerous ones. Especially if you are working on big projects, no one actually takes an AI code straight away to the production. It is very risky. So that's why on projects, we still need human experience to check if the answers make sense to review it and as well to make sure it is actually meeting the requirements. This is exactly why you need to understand what the code is doing, how to maintain it and how to fix it. And there is as well a key difference. There is a huge gap between consuming AI and building an AI. Python is the main language behind building and training AI models. So you can use AI to generate Python code but you need Python in order to build an AI. And as well Python still one of the most in-demand language in the world, whether you are data engineer, analyst, scientist, web and game developer, we all use Python. So that's why you still have to learn Python. And now there is something that I want you to understand before you start learning Python. Keep in mind this golden rule. Spend 20% of your time consuming and 80% coding. So that means my friend, less watching and more doing. Because it is very simple. You don't learn Python by just watching someone else coding. You learn it by doing it yourself. So that means my friend, less watching and more doing. All right, my friends, so with that, we have now the right mindset. And now I'm going to show you the roadmap that I have shared with my friend. And it is divided into five simple phases. The first phase is to prepare your setup. And here we have to make a few small but important decisions. The first thing to do is to pick only one course so that you follow only one instructor and one style. And now since our golden rule says practice more than consuming, I'm gonna recommend you Datacab if you are starting out with Python. It is super interactive, you're gonna write code right inside the platform and you're gonna get instant feedback as you go. Now Datacab is sponsoring this video, thank you so much for that, I'm happy about it because they have built exactly Exactly what I wish I had when I started many years ago. Now, if you are a total beginner, I'm gonna recommend you to start with the Python data fundamentals. It covers all the basics, variable, loops, how to work with data. It is basically the same roadmap that I'm gonna suggest actually later. So this track is for total beginners. Now, moving on, if you are planning to be a data analyst, then I'm gonna recommend the track data analyst in Python. Here you can start learning real world tools like pandas, numpy, and data visualization. So everything in one package to prepare you to become a data analyst. So those two tracks are project based and gonna help you to learn by doing directly at your browser. So if you are serious about learning Python the right way, then start with Datacamp. And of course, there are many other free options. Like for example, you can follow my course on YouTube. I have already published 30 videos about Python where I have covered all the basic topics. It is made for total beginners, even if you never programmed before. So again, all that you have to do is now to pick only one course. Next, you have to go and pick one tool. You can use Jupyter Notebook or Visual Studio Code, but I always recommend Visual Studio Code because that's what most professionals use in real projects. But if you are planning to be a data analyst, it is totally okay to use notebooks. Then after that, I want you to go and make a rough plan. You can go and use my free Notion Python roadmap templates. You can find the link in the description. This is really nice because it's gonna help you stay organized 
and as well to track your progress week by week and as well you can celebrate small wins. Now with that you have your setup ready and you can immediately start learning the basics of Python. So you're gonna learn how to print, how to get input from users, you're gonna learn about variables and data types and how to control the flow using conditional statements and loops and about the data structures and functions. And once you cover those topics, actually you are already learned about 80% of what we use in Python on daily basis. And in this phase, my tip for you, don't try to memorize the syntax and everything, just understand the idea behind it. And depend on your speed, this phase can take around 3-4 to four weeks. Alright, so now after we have learned all the basics, I want you to go and close the course. And now it's time to practice with AI like ChatGPT. So now in this phase, I want you to open on your screen only two things, your editor and ChatGPT. Every day you have to practice with the AI and I want you to treat it like your coding partner. And now for you, I was testing few prompts and I have prepared for you the following one. You can find it in Notion Roadmap. So in the prompt first, we're gonna give some context like what you have already learned. With that, it can create challenges at your level. After that, you assign for ChatGPT the role, the Python coach, and then we're gonna ask ChatGPT to challenge us, so to give us one exercise at a time, and each one gonna be slightly harder than the last. And after that, you send your code, your solution to ChatGPT, so it review it, gives you a feedback, and maybe help you to improve it. So this is what we're gonna do every day, keep practicing, challenging, feedback, and keep progressing. So that's it, in this phase, you have to keep repeating this process. Challenge practice, solution, and feedback. And I know sometimes you might get stuck with the AI. That's why I'm gonna recommend you to go to the W3 schools. They explain things in a really simple way. And to be honest, I used it for years in order to learn Python and as well, I always go back to it if I need to check something. But now if you are still stuck and you don't get it, only then go open the course and watch an explanation. But only if you have tried and failed on your own, because I want you in this phase to struggle, to have hard time, it is really the only way to learn something. And for this phase, I'm gonna say spend between like one to two weeks every day only practicing with the AI. All right, friends, so once you start feeling confident with coding, it's time to pick your path. Python is really huge and you cannot learn everything. And here you have to be really careful because I have seen a lot of people that trying to learn everything about Python and they ended up quitting. So think about it like doctors, they have to learn first general topics and then they specialize on something. You need to do exactly the same. You have to pick one direction and then go deep. Like for example, if you want to be a web developer, then pick Flask or Fast API. But if you want to be a data analyst, then you have to learn Pandas and NumPy. We data engineers, we usually learn PySpark. For machine learning, we learn TensorFlow or PyTorch. So as you can see, it depends on your specialization. Once you pick your area, you're gonna pick one of the libraries, gonna learn the basics and then start experimenting. Now my tip for you, don't rush it. Just understand what it does and how it is used. So by the end of this phase, you start feeling that you are like specialist in Python. And I'm gonna recommend for this phase to spend at least one month learning a Python library. Now my friends, we come to the fun part and honestly, the most important one, we're gonna go and build portfolio projects. So go and create an account by GitHub and create repositories if you don't have one. And then start searching in GitHub for projects that fits your niche. Like for example, if you are learning Python to become a data analyst, then go and grab a data set, ask business questions, and then do a full EDA project. But if you want to be a data engineer using Python, then go and build a small data leak house where you extract, transform, and prepare the data. But if you are into web development, then go and create API or build your personal portfolio websites. So whatever your niche is, always upload everything to GitHub. This is your public portfolio. It is a proof that you don't just learn, you build. And my tip for you, each time you are done with a project, go to LinkedIn and share your success story. These mini wins gonna help you to connect more to other people like you and as well, it gonna keep you motivated. So this phase is really important because it is the moment where you're gonna feel I'm not just learning, actually I am creator. And I can tell you, you're gonna enjoy this phase because finally you're gonna understand the overall big 
picture and how everything is like connected together and you understand the why why you are learning those stuff and i recommend for this phase to stay at least two months just doing portfolio projects so my friends, I don't have any more cafe. We have to recap. So those are the exact faces that I have recommended my friend. And I would follow if I had to learn Python all over again. And remember this, if you have been learning Python for six months and you haven't built anything real yet, then you are not learning, you are just consuming. So always remember that 28 rule. If you are learning more than practicing, then you are doing it wrong. At the end, the process is really simple. Learn a little, practice with AI, build portfolio projects and share it and then repeat. So if you like this type of content and you want me to make more, then support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. This really helps to reach other people like you. And by the way, I have been very active in LinkedIn. So follow me there and you can subscribe as well to my weekly newsletter if you want to stay updated. So at the end, nothing left to say. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.